reading from uh, two places this morning. I first want to go to John chapter 13, and then we'll go to Matthew chapter 27. John chapter 13 and Matthew 27. Do one of these messages that maybe, well, I, I, I'll tell you what, I found this article. I looked it up this week and well, it's what's impressed me, the article I have right in my hand. <clears throat> John chapter 13, begin at verse one. Now, before the feast of the Passover, <clears throat> when Jesus knew that his hour was come, he should depart out of the world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world. He loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Jews the scared Simon's son to betray him. Jesus, knowing the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was to come from God and went to God. Back to verse two. And supper being ended, the devil having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Matthew chapter 27, again at verse 3. Then Judas, which betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned that I've betrayed the innocent blood. And they said to them, what is it to us? See thou to that. He cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hung him and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces, which is not lawful for them to put into the treasury because it was a price of blood. They took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. When it was fulfilled, that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet saying, they took the 30 pieces of silver and the price of him that was valued, whom they, he, of the children of Israel did value, they gave for them the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. You probably already guessed that I'm dealing with Judas Iscariot this morning. The title of my message is The Absolute Despair of Judas. The Absolute Despair of Judas. Help me, Lord, while I preach. Bless, Father, ask you to anoint my lips of clay, anoint the people here, anoint the people who hear by other means. I ask you, Father, to touch hearts and lives, whoever hears or sees this message in Jesus' name. Amen. The absolute despair of Judas. I'd rather got up this morning and preach something to make people happy, wouldn't you think? I would have rather got up here and challenge you to be a soul winner. I'd rather got up here and dealt with issues like uh, like greed and well, I maybe hit it in it, but I'm talking about just rather deal with general issues, the blood of Jesus Christ and the sinful nature of man. But this morning, I feel led to deal with the absolute despair of Judas. Now, I want you to know something. 
I believe the sin of suicide is a sin of despair. And I believe this morning, I don't believe this is an accident. I, I really believe the Lord wanted me to preach this here this morning. I believe God is dealing with some people and warning people. And I feel led this morning to deliver this message because I believe in this hour we're going to have to know how to deal with people better. But Judas, let's look at him a few minutes. Judas was a chosen vessel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 10, 1 through 4, Jesus was praying. And after he prayed all night and sought the Lord all night, boy, I think it would do us good if we could pray all night sometimes before we make some decisions. How many times have we made a decision and only to regret making that decision? But anyway, enough on that. He prayed all night and then he got, and the Lord dealt with him about his 12 chosen ones, the 12 apostles, Simon, Peter, Matthew, John, and the rest, James and James. I tell you what, and amongst them was Judas Iscariot. Judas was a chosen vessel. The Lord had his hand upon him just as much he had on the Apostle John, the Apostle James, the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Bartholomew, the Apostle Nathaniel, and the other ones. <laughs> this morning, he was just as much of an apostle as the rest. God has given him the same opportunities that he gave the rest. Some things start to happen. Not only that, he was not only chosen, but Judas was empowered by the Lord Jesus Christ. We read in Luke chapter 10 how, you know, he was a, he sent out his disciples two by two, and as they went out, they saw many miracles. And in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, some of them came back rejoicing, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us by thy name. And he said, and the Lord said, and I saw Satan, I beheld Satan fall from heaven. Amen, as lightning. He went on to say, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you through my name, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I believe Jesus' name was written in heaven at that time. Amen. Judas was empowered. There was a story years ago. Now, I don't know what the, it's been a while since I've looked at the Greek derivative of G, the letter J. But there was a lady who kept sewing different clothes and stuff. And they always know, so they had that certain letter in the alphabet on the clothes she sewed. And they asked this lady, said, why do you keep putting that letter on? Which would be the equivalent of the letter J. She said, oh, I'm doing that in the honor of my son. He, uh... You know, my son done a lot of great works while he was living here in this life. He went out and cast out devils. Uh, he raised the he healed the sick and raised the dead. Uh, he preached the gospel to many people and even saw people saved. Uh, he done a great work and as they were there listening, they said, you know, that must be Mary, the mother of Jesus. They never even thought about asking her name one minute. So they put up some, got some money together and they helped this lady. She was a widow by then. Financially, during her last days on earth, thinking it was a, a, the, Mary, the mother of Jesus. But Mary, came, this woman, pardon me, came down to the day where she was ready to die. And all these people gathered around thinking her being the mother of Jesus, she would be somebody superior I got news. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is the same of each and every one of us. She was born in sin and trespasses. Remember, she said, God, my Savior. 
she on the day of Pentecost, which is the last time I can honestly say see it during the scriptures, she needed the Holy Ghost as much as the rest of the people. Come on. She received the Holy Ghost. What are you trying to say, Brother Roy? I'm trying to say Mary was a great woman as a chosen vessel, but she's nobody to worship. But back to this other lady. As she lay dying, some of the people wanted to be there to, to comfort her. They thought, surely the mother of Jesus is somebody we need to honor and gather around while she's passing away. <laughs> and when they start to talk to her, as she uh, was there uh, dying, they said, yes, ma'am, we're glad to have honored you in your dying hours, and we're glad to have took care of you because we know indeed you was the mother of the Lord Jesus. And at that time in her weak, frail body, she looked up to those people and said, Sir, I'm not the mother of the Lord Jesus. They said, then whose mother were you? I was the mother of Judas Iscariot, whom the Lord betrayed. And with that, she closed her eyes in death. Amen. He was there the whole time. He saw the many miracles Jesus did. He saw the feeding of the multitudes. He saw the raisings of the dead. He saw the great miracles of casting out demons. He had some of the great same opportunities that the others once had. He learned the same lessons. I believe he was more likely at the Sermon of the Mount and he probably heard a lot of Jesus teaching and preaching as well, seeing Jesus' great miracles. But you know something? Some things start to happen in his heart. First thing we know, we know greed had entered his heart. Amen. We know when that one woman broke that ointment in John chapter 12 and in Mark chapter 14, he was one of the main ones complained and said, hey, this is precious ointment. We should, we, we, this is a waste of money. We should have, we should have used that money to help the poor and needy. You know, that wasn't because he cared for the poor. It's because his heart was, he wasn't concerned about the poor and the needy. He was just concerned about one man, the greedy. Can I tell you something? Sometimes we'll find people saying this is a waste of money at the church because we're building a new building, because we're doing something to improve the church. And they will be saying, shouldn't we give the money to the poor in the community? I'm not against helping the poor in the community. I'm for it. Amen. I want you to know that. <clears throat> it's hard to give the gospel out when somebody's belly's growling. Come on. But on the other hand, that should be more, about, more concerned about reaching the gospel to those. Once again, I believe in helping the poor in the sense of helping them to reach the to find Jesus to be born again, but once again, just to feed them and clothe them, and they never get their heart right with God, they'll go on and die lost. Amen. The love of money is the root of all evil, which while some have coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many a sorrow. Judas had the love of money in his heart. He was the one that held the bag. He was the one who uh, was more concerned about the money in the treasury than he was in really getting the message out. But this morning, Judas had greed. Judas had backslidden. The Bible says, Proverbs 14, 14, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. Can I tell you something this morning? 
I believe the reason many people in our churches wind up committing suicide is because of backsliding, Brother Joel. If they was walking with the Lord, they would know that they could call on him. Oh, I know the devil will lie to you. He'll tell you God's failed you, God's forsook you, whatever God's standing right there to help you. I know that. Who even tell you sometimes, go ahead and kill yourself. Thing to do is answer back, no thank you, devil. I'm going to trust the Lord for here on out. Amen. I heard about Chinese missionary. His wife died. His baby died. And here he was thousands of miles away from home. He went to the edge of a, of a wall or a building. And as he was looking out over that building after his wife and daughter died or son died, whichever it was, the devil whispered to him, just go ahead and throw yourself off. Thank God that man was walking with the Lord and knew better, though he had a lot of grief, a, a lot of sorrow to follow, <clears throat> a lot of trials and tests. Juice was backslidden. And finally, it got so bad, as I read in John chapter 13, the devil entered his heart to betray him. I'm going to tell you something. We got to walk close to God. We got to get to know this word right here. And let me tell you why. The devil will at times try to enter our heart. Now I believe we may not have the devil enter in the sense that he entered Judas because I really believe it was the devil himself that entered in. It may not be the devil himself, but the devil likes to get a hold of our hearts. And he liked to change us. And he liked to drive us to the point of the desperation that Judas Iscariot went to. He finally led them to where Jesus was. He finally led them to where Jesus was. And when they got there, he betrayed him with a kiss. He kissed the door of heaven and went on to die lost and go to hell. I tell you, it's better to be looking towards Jesus from a distance and yet heading towards him, getting closer to him, drawing nigh, and being going forward than to be standing right, right in front of him with your back turned away from him, heading back to the things of the world. I'll tell you something this morning. Judas betrayed Jesus. But now the, the, the text of Matthew chapter 27. Then Judas, when he had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned... You know what I believe with all my heart? I don't believe Judas really thought that Jesus was going to die on the cross that day. I am convinced that he probably would not have done it if he really had thought that Jesus was going to be condemned already. I really believe that. I believe he probably thought Jesus was going to perform a miracle in that hour. <clears throat> escape from them. But you know something? It wasn't in the Father's plan. Remember, when Jesus was in the garden, he prayed, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt, O Lord. <clears throat> See, he knew, being God, he was going to have to die on that cross. Some people said, oh, he was afraid of the pain of the nails and the lashings and the spit upon, and the thorns drowned in his, driven into his flesh. No, that's our, that would be our fear. What do you mean, Brother Roy? We don't like pain. We don't like suffering. And I don't believe Jesus did either, but I don't believe that was his main concern. Because when he was on the cross, did he not say, <clears throat> My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He knew that he was going to bear the sins of mankind. <clears throat> Remember, Jesus, being God, could not look upon sin, but now the sins of the world, your sin, my sin, the sin of everybody out there, 
Even Judas Iscariot was going to be placed upon his body in that hour. I believe that's what Jesus was more was the most concerned about. But there was no other way. Though the Jews know that's why Jesus came into the world to die for sin. Now he did Judas. Uh, find out that his plot was backfiring. Can I tell you something this morning? Anytime you listen to the devil, your plot, your plans, they're going to back, they're going to backfire. I promise you, because the devil's a liar and the father of it. You know, we remember that time after God told, after Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, and how Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed that to you, but my father, which is in heaven. Then he went on to talk about the crucifixion. And then he said, and Peter said to him, not so, Lord. And he was there trying to say, listen, you don't have to do this. But Jesus turned around and called, the, called Peter Satan. Let me tell you what happened to Simon Peter. He was listening to God. But all of a sudden, the devil came along and started whispering to him, saying, Jesus is not going to die. He's not going to die on the cross. And he rebuked him. Jesus did. I'll tell you something. This morning, the devil will lie. It was God's plan for Jesus to die on the cross. This morning, we need to be centered around God's plan. We may at times have things we're going to do, we're going to have to dread but this morning, we need to be willing that this morning, if you follow the devil, look out. He'll promise you a lot. He'll promise you the sun, the moon, and planet Mars. He'll promise you the sun, moon, the stars, and planet Mars. He'll lie to you when he get, whenever you've done what he told you to do. I'll tell you something. We need... We need to follow Jesus and not listen to him. What happened next? He now found out he'd been deceived. He repented himself. Yes, he did repent. And I could get on that issue and I'm going to just deal with it a couple minutes, Lord willing. I'm not going to deal with whether I feel he was really sincere or not. But there is such a thing as insincere repentance. What do you mean? Well, Esau, after he had, uh, after he had sold his uh, inheritance for uh, his birthright for a, a bowl of soup, so to speak, what did he do? He found himself crying, seeking the Lord for repentance, and he did it with bitter tears, but he was never accepted. I know there's different schools of thought even that, but I'm with a camp that believes that. Though Esau did repent, he was very insincere. How many times people repent because they want something besides their light, heart and life to be right with God? I'm going to tell you, sometimes we need to seek God when we're repenting. We need to make sure we're, we're sincere in it. How many people have come to church it would be a sinner, man. They've got something in mind when they get to church. A young holiness lady sitting there. And they're repenting all right because they just have their eye on that holiness lady. I'll tell you, there's been many lives destroyed because of that insincere repentance. There's other ways it could happen too. That's probably one of the more common ones. But regardless whether he was sincere or not, it's the next sin he did, I believe, drove him to even a worse point of desperation. He repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elders. You know what I believe his... 
what this is pro he was already desperate. He was already, I believe, under a heavy load, knowing that he had done wrong. I believe he was really in some ways was sincere. But I'll tell you what, he this is why, regardless of whether he was sincere or not, is not even the main issue. It's what he did next that I probably believe that really destroyed Judas. Rather than running to Jesus and getting his mercy and getting his forgiveness, rather than running to maybe one of the apostles like the apostle John who stood right there, the only apostle we read about that stood at the cross. Uh, amen. I would not have recommended him to run to Peter. He was probably, he had enough of, on his plate already. But I believe he could have gone to somebody like the Apostle John for help or gone to, to the foot of the cross and say, Master, I have sinned. I have betrayed you. I'm going to tell you what I believe with all my heart. You can disagree if you want to. I believe Jesus would have forgave Judas Iscariot. You know what else I believe? Tonight or this morning, I believe that when God rose up the Apostle Paul years later, he basically took the, the ministry Judas Iscariot was supposed to have. It was not supposed to be Paul, the missionary, the missionary to the Gentiles, I, or apostle to the Gentiles. I believe Judas was going to do it. But guess what? He made a horrible mistake and cost his life and cost his soul. But later on, God rose up another man he was probably just as wicked as he was. He was looking for a man as wicked as Judas. He found him in the Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus got saved. And God blessed him and done a great work. Even wrote most of the New Testament. But Judas. He went, he went to the wrong people. I'll tell you. How many times when people do a sin like that, rather than running to the church, rather than running to the altar, rather than running back to God, they'll run back to the sinful crowd. They'll run back to those who are not even preaching the sound gospel message. They'll run back to the wrong people. And as a result, they get the wrong advice. And as a result, they find themselves in more despair than they ever was before. That's what I believe happened to, to Judas Iscariot. He was at the point of absolute despair. Just imagine some of us this morning have probably been to the point of despair before. Just think how much more worse it was when, the, when Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. He said, I have sinned and that I have portrayed the innocent blood. I like that, the innocent blood. How did they react to him? They said, what is it to us? See thou to it. They could care less. They could care less. They got him to do what they want. And he done what they wanted. He got what he wanted. And he didn't want what he got as we find out. He took that money, those 30 pieces of silver, and he cast them down in the temple and departed. He departed. He departed. He is even willing to make it right as far as restitution, brother Paul. He was willing to give back that which he had, had got illegally. That's how far he went. And he went. And he hanged him. 
himself. How many people do we know have gotten to that point of despair? They got to the point where they felt rejected by God. They got to the point where they became very bitter. They got to the point where their heart was far away from God. They felt that God could never forgive them. You know, I know people have felt they have committed the unpardonable sin. I believe people have. But I'm going to say something that may be a little controversial. I'm not worried about the one who's in absolute despair, who thinks they've committed the unpardonable sin, Brother Paul. I am concerned about the one who acts like everything's okay. They're not troubled one bit that they may have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. I'm serious. I believe those who've got a hard heart to, to the point where it don't even bother them. That's the ones I'm afraid of. The ones who are crying, ready to kill themselves. Those are the ones I believe can still find help. Amen. I believe they're the ones that can still find help, the broken ones, the ones that feel that God will never accept them. I believe God can't accept them all. They may never be able to preach the gospel in the pulpit again. They may never be able to do a lot of the things they did, or they may be able to. I believe that between them and God. Amen. But I tell you what I do believe this morning. Judas got to that point of absolute desperation. Sometimes it's because they felt God has forsaken them. Sometimes they feel man is forsaken. I'm not going to name the name, but I think Brother Paul will know who I'm talking about. An elderly preacher who preached the gospel for 60, 70 years. You know, anybody that knows about his calling, he got called of God because of, a, of either, I think, a donkey or mule probably kicking him in the head. When he got, when they found him, he was dead, Brother Paul. You know what they did? They took this man into the house and they put him on the table. And while there, the Lord revived him and gave him a special message to preach for well over 60 years. I don't know what happened. I'd love to think, Brother Paul, I'd love to think that somebody hated the man, killed him, and made it look like a suicide. I always like to think that when I hear about suicides anymore. I'd rather hear about murder any day than a suicide. Let me tell you why. I believe it's possible for that person to call on God and be born again while they're, by somebody's trying to kill them. It's not likely going to happen when they're committing suicide. Found hang. And dead. 60 plus years of preaching. 60 plus years. I think he just felt rejected and discouraged. Oh, if he would have just had some friends to say, listen, you're not through. God wants to use you. Who knows? I think he was still alive when I was pastor at Gib Brown. I would probably gladly had the man. But regardless, he had no business ending his life. But now I want to tell another story. And this is a story that inspired this message. We know yep, Judas is dead and we know he is in hell right now. But there's still hope. There's a lady I know when she was about 19 years old the most precious person in her life died. I think it was kidney failure. It don't really matter what he died of. But that was the man, it was her dad. She would call her dad, hit her angel. Her dad was a precious man, really treated her good. And now for the sad part of the story, her mother was a devil. I don't know all that happened. Don't want to know all that happened. That's the way I feel. But her mother was an abusive woman. I know that much. And that's all I, we even need to know. 
she mistreated this yet lady. She done her wrong and abused her. It wasn't long after her father died, an aunt of hers, the sister of her mother, if I got correct, was in the hospital. Her, her aunt was a severe diabetic. Her blood sugar was well over a thousand. And she was laying in the hospital. That's in this story right here. This article I wrote. And as her, she had been there, I don't know how many hours. I really forget how many hours this young girl was, 19 years old, at, her, at the foot of her aunt's bed, trying to help her while she was in the hospital, suffering from severe high blood sugar. After so many hours, she was getting tired. She was getting discouraged. She was getting desperate. You know, she was needing help to help her aunt. All of a sudden, this is the way she put it, her mother and her new husband came waltzing into the room. That's the exact word she used, waltzing into the room. The young girl looked at her mother and said, listen, Mom, it's been, I've been at this for I don't know how many hours. It was a long time, I can tell you that. Will you please take over for a while and help your sister for a while? I'm so tired. I need a break. You know what her mother and her, and her uh, new husband did? Rather than saying, sure, let me work out my schedule here. I'll be right in the second I can. That had been the best answer. The better answer might have been yes, but sometimes you can't always drop everything. But she could have at least guaranteed she'd be there and been there. And guess what happened? Her mother. It's shameful when a mother is so cruel to her child. I don't like it when a man is cruel. I hate it too. But something about a mother doing it burns me up worse. Now, that's Chip Roy theology. I'm sure a lot of others feel the same way. But here goes. They laughed. They made fun of her. They scorned her. Here she was, tired, weary, desperate. Need a break. You know what this lady, 19 years old, did? She walked up to the window, and she I never forget whether she actually stepped out or not. So I really don't know. She may have very well stepped out on the window edge. But she looked out the window, and she was ready to commit suicide by jumping four stories to her death. <laughs> Desperation, Judas. Oh, what did God? Judas done what this young girl did later on. She later on gave her heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and was born again. I tell you, people who are committing suicide are in this state of desperation. This morning, I hope I'm I hope I'm missing it. I hope nobody here at this church is ready to do it. I hope I'm wrong that, but I am recording it. And who knows, somebody out there who listens may be at that point. And this morning, if there is, please don't end yourself. Turn your life to the Lord. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This morning, don't let the devil desperation cause you to jump out a window. Thank God that young lady did not jump out the window. Thank God she's still alive, still well, 10 years later. But this morning, whatever is going on, don't turn away from the Lord. Don't turn to the wrong crowds. Turn to Jesus. Turn to the Lord. God bless you.